feel same. Okay, now if if I was going out to, to if I see a car I like and I say I see it and it's uh, now would you recommend buying from a, a car dealer or buying from? Uh, well, most people like buying from an individual because right. buying from an individual they feel like uh, they're going to get a, a more honest deal. Now there's one thing people have to watch for it. It's got a name now. It's called curbsiding. There are a lot of people out there that are selling used cars, adding them in papers, and they're pretending it's their car or their brother-in-law's car. Right. And they're salesmen, really. Right. And you want to check that out by always looking at the title of a car before any deals. And if there's, if you're at all suspicious, say you want to see the title. If they say, well, they don't have it, then go on to somebody else because yeah. there's a lot of people doing that. Yeah, well, we we got a guy down the, down the street here on Henry that uh, every week I go by there, he has a new car in front of his house. <laughs> yeah, now, if they're honest about it, it doesn't matter. If, yeah. if they have a used car dealer license, they can show it to you, and they'll say, yes, I'm a used car dealer, and I buy and sell. Some of those guys, they know what they're doing. They'll buy a car for a thousand, sell it for two thousand, mm -hmm. and if somebody gets a good car for two thousand, they could be very happy with it. But a lot of these people are just guys that go out and they buy wrecked cars yeah. or cars that have been stolen. They pick them up for for five, six hundred dollars, fix them as cheaply as they can, and try to sell them for three or four thousand dollars. The general way to find those people are in the ads in the paper. The asking price will usually always be a few thousand or fifteen hundred less than what the book value of the car is in those blue books. And that's pretty much a flag that says, oh, these people may be salesmen selling and pretending it's somebody else. Right. Now, most people will advertise a car at book value, which is usually highly inflated in what it's actually worth. But they advertise it at book, so when you barter with them, you can come down. These guys already come down because they don't want to waste their time. They want to get people fast to sell cars and then sell another one. And they, they, they're... Pretty sharp at it, so you always want to look at the title, see whose name is in it. Okay, so you should well, check the check the name of the title and check look at check the name, see if it's their name, and uh, see how old then, the title is. Uh, of course, the biggest thing there is it'll always tell you the last owner of the car and the original owner. If they're not the original, it goes back two generations. And if uh, they say it's one owner and it's got somebody else's name on as the previous lien holder, you know they're <laughs> giving you a line of baloney. Okay. and that makes a lot in a used car because if it's a one owner. It's worth a lot more than if it's been through two or three people. Okay, now if you're going up to these these people and they're selling this this used car, now aren't they selling it for re the reason that uh, okay, there's too many things that are going wrong with this car, so they well, there's buy lots of reasons. A lot of people are worried that when they get a used car, they're buying somebody else's problem. Yeah. Now, some of the times that's the case, but that's why I wrote this book. Today, it's not as much as it used to be because with the price of new cars averaging over twenty thousand dollars, a lot of people can't afford a new car, and a lot of people, when they need cash, you just think, the only way you can get ready cash is by selling a car if you've got a nice car. It might take you a year to sell a house, and you know how TVs, VCRs are. You buy them for $800. If you ever try to sell them or pawn them, you're going to get about $50. Right, so right. Cars are worth a lot of money. And uh, As an example, last year I had a customer. She had three cars. Her and her two sons had three cars, and they needed money for his college education, so what they did was they sold the best car they had because they knew they wouldn't get much for the two clunkers. Right. But they sold a really nice Honda for $4,000, and the person who bought it happened to be one of my customers. and She was real happy with the car, and they were happy to get the money. So there's plenty of good used cars out there. You just have to know what you're doing by reading a book like mine. and. Uh, uh, you don't have to be a mechanic. You just have to be able to read the English language. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, now, the, like I said, you say, the first first step is checking the, 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 the title to see if it's a... Uh, yeah, to see if it's a legitimate deal, because you don't want to go any further if it's not a legitimate deal. Okay. Uh, and if it isn't, just walk away. Now, when an average person is checking out a car, there's three main things you want to look at, and that's the body, the engine, and the transmission. Everybody can use their eyes, look for blemishes, see if the paint doesn't match. And where you guys are... Look under the wheel wells for rust, around all the windows, especially the front back windows, for rust, and open the trunk. Look under the spare tire and look around for rust there because cars, that's where they start to rust. And when a car starts rusting, you guys know it's on its last legs and you right. don't want to pay much money for a rusty car. If you're getting a car for a few hundred bucks, hey, you're going to get some rust up there. Down here in Texas, you don't, but up there you do, and it might still be a decent car, but if you're paying a lot of money, you don't want a rust mobile. And then you want to check the transmission, which most cars are going to be automatic, back up for about a minute or two in an empty parking lot, because reverse is often the first gear that goes out in automatics. Okay. So back up a little, then go up and down hills and corners, see if it shifts right. Even if you don't know what a transmission is, you know when it doesn't shift right and it jerks and clunks or if it makes noises, then check the engine. And if you know much about engines, just start the car up, look for smoke. If you see black smoke or blue smoke, walk away. And when you're road testing it, uh, in the summer especially,
especially if it has air conditioning, turn the air conditioning on full blast. And when you drive it 10, 15 minutes, say, look at the temperature gauge. Because if the temperature gauge is getting too hot, walk away. Never buy a used car that has an overheating problem because maybe it's a $50 water pump, but, hey, it might be a $2,000 engine job, and you don't want to mess with a car that's overheating if you're going to pay a decent dollar for it. Okay, okay. Some good tips in here. I mean, that, this, this is oh, I've got millions of them in the book. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is something that I, I, I definitely should buy. I, I yeah, think I'm, it's, I think because it's, it's been a very expensive, <laughs> very very expensive lesson for me. I've, I've I've spent so many so much money on used cars. I mean, uh, a friend of mine over at the air show this week, we were joking about some car that uh, Robosaurus was going to eat because uh, it looked like a better car than some of the cars that I've had in the past. You know. So um, I, I was never a very good judge of a very good well, judge of cars. Well, you know, this cars. book's only $12.95, and it, I figure I've saved Americans about $50 million bucks by how many I've sold so far. I figure the average person is going to save about $500. And uh, it's knowledge that anybody can use. And even, even you, when you said, oh, I've lost a lot of money. Well, you haven't really. Because just think, if you would have bought new cars instead of used, if you bought one for 20 and then when it's seven, eight years old, it's worth about three. You just lost seventeen thousand right. dollars. And I imagine for seventeen thousand dollars, you can get quite a few good used cars. And even if a couple were lemons, you're still coming out ahead of time. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, the cars are cars are the worst investment Americans make because it's complete depreciation. And I don't even care if you go out and buy classic cars. I used to work with a guy that uh, did classic cars. He'd buy them and fix them up and sell them. And they depreciate like anything else. Oh, yeah. Even though one of these books will say, uh, you know, 1956 Bugatti is worth $500,000. You try to find somebody who's going to pay you $500,000. Yeah. I've had customers all day long buy classic T-Birds and Lincolns and things like that from the 60s, and they were really fixed nice. And they picked the things up for seven, dollars $8,000. They never have all that much resale value because... It's a toy, and not that many people are going to spend fifteen, twenty grand. For and it's a very toy. expensive to keep it up. Yeah, yeah that they I, can't use every day anyway. I had a '62 Ford Fairlane that I finally sold because I, I found out how much money it was going to, going to keep costing me to keep fixing this thing up, and I figured it was time to it was time to get out. So. Yeah, when they get that old, they become toys. I have customers just bought a '60 uh, Studebaker with a V8 in it, and it really goes. Uh, but the thing is, every time it breaks, you might be laid up for a month or two trying to find parts. <laughs> Yeah. Now, as far as getting the book, is it, is it available in bookstores? You can order it in any bookstore in the United States, but if you're in a hurry, you can call 1-800-221-9697, and it's only $12.95. It'll save you a lot of headache. <laughs> okay. So 1-800-221-9697. Okay. Or you can order it in any bookstore in the United States. Okay, we got a brand new Barnes & Noble. It's uh, just opened up today. So. Oh, uh, yeah, you can order it there. Just tell my name, Scott Kilmer, just like Val Kilmer. Same last name. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Scott. Well, thanks for having me on. And uh, <laughs> maybe maybe we should do a uh, a car tip of the week or something because uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely something that I could use. So maybe somebody else out there could uh, use it too. Sure. Anytime. Give me a call. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Mm-hmm. Bye. Goodbye.